So let's now take a look at the VCO module in VCV rack. Now I'm going to disconnect it from the filter because I want to hear the signal completely unfiltered. So let's disconnect these connections here. So the filter is now disconnected, but I still want to reconnect the signal. So I'll take the sine wave output this time and plug it directly into the VCA. All right, so it should still work. It's just that we're not using the VCF. I'm also going to add another module, right click in the background, and let's add in a scope. This can be very helpful when we're understanding how a signal specifically works. So let's take a duplicate sine output and plug it into the input here on the scope. All right, so we're listening to the sine wave. When I play a note, you'll hear the sine wave. I can adjust the overall frequency of the sine wave here. And then I can double click to reset it back to default and control the sine wave pitch from the keyboard. Now you're hearing a lot of clicks and pops every time I play a single note. And we'll address that eventually. It has something to do with the gate and the VCA. But for now, just ignore that and focus on the tone coming out of the VCO. So we talked about the frequency controlled here and we're looking at the scope. We've zoomed out a lot on the scope. So let's zoom in a bit with this time parameter. And I'll turn off this trigger feature. So we get a static sine wave there. So there you go. So that is the sine wave. The purest tone that exists, it only has the fundamental frequency, just one harmonic and no other harmonic content. All right, so let's compare this with a triangle. So you can see here we've switched to the triangle shape on the scope, but let's also listen to it. I'll click and drag this over here. So a triangle wave has odd only harmonics. So it does have additional harmonics compared to a sine wave. And you can see here the shape looks a bit different. It's not a perfect triangular shape. Like you may have noticed on other synthesizers, you get a very perfect triangular shape. This looks more like a shark fin shape. And that's just because this VCO is modeled after analog hardware devices, which are never perfect. All right, so that's our triangle waveform. Still fairly mellow, but a little bit more harmonically rich compared to the sine wave. Now, next, let's switch over to the sawtooth waveform. Let's also look at it in the scope. So I'll switch this over here. So a lot brighter, as you can hear, and you can see here the shape looks kind of like a sawtooth. Has a bit of a curve here. Again, we're using this analog modeled module here, so it's not a perfect sawtooth shape. But it pretty much sounds like a sawtooth. A sawtooth has odd and even harmonics, and it's a very harmonically rich waveform, especially when compared to a triangle and a sine. All right, let's switch over to the last option, which is the square waveform. So a square also has a lot of harmonics, but only has odd numbered harmonics compared to the sawtooth, which has odd and even harmonics. So tonally, it sounds a bit different, even though it is quite bright. And visually, you can see here, it kind of looks like a square. All right, now with the square, we have one other parameter, this pulse width control. By default, it's set to 50%, and that's why we get this square wave with all odd only harmonics. But check out what happens when I change the pulse width. Let me reduce it. So it doesn't go down to zero, it stops at 1%. So essentially every waveform is oscillating positive or negative above this zero crossing line. And a square wave spends half of its time in the upper part and other half of its time in the bottom part. So when that pulse width, if I double click and set to 50%, that's your perfect square wave because 50% of this entire shape is spent in the positive phase and 50% on the negative phase. But with the pulse width control, we can change that. You can see how 
As I reduce the pulse width, the square wave is spending more time in the negative phase compared to the positive. And also this shift is asymmetrical. You can see it's not straight. So as we reduce it, it kind of shifts upwards. And as I increase it, you can see now we're spending more time in the positive phase, but the entire waveform is shifting downwards. Now one thing to keep in mind with pulse width is when the pulse width is in the center and you get this pure square wave shape, you have odd only harmonics, but when you adjust the pulse, you introduce even harmonics as well. Another thing to keep in mind is that, let's say a pulse width set at 14.342% gives us this particular shape. So 14% of the time we're spending in the positive phase and the remaining in the negative phase. Now if we do the opposite of that, so I guess 85 approximately, it's gonna sound exactly the same. Switching back again to 85. So the actual range for this control is kind of from 50% where it's like a square wave with all only harmonics and then either all the way up to 99% or all the way down to 1%. You notice it sounds exactly the same. All right, so that is a pulse width control. Now you notice that we don't have this pulse width control when we have a saw waveform. We're still seeing the change because we're looking at the square. Switching over to the saw, you don't see any change. Switching over to the triangle, don't see any change. That was just a frequency control. And obviously in the sine wave as well, no change. All right, so that is the VCO. We will eventually take a look at some of these other options over here, but we've covered the basics, the pitch control, pulse width when you're working with the square waveform, and the three other waveforms, and also the one volt per octave pitch input. So that is the Eurorack standard. For every volt, we get a range of one octave or 12 semitones. And we don't have to do any math as long as we have a one volt per octave output from the MIDI to CV converter. It takes care of the math and converts it to this one volt per octave signal to control the pitch so we get that equal temper tuning. All right, in the next tutorial, we will dive deeper into the voltage controlled filter module.